Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Um, today we're going to be installing some off-road lights onto my 2015 Ram 2500. So um, I've actually got three different sets uh, that I'm looking at. I don't know which one I'm going to install yet, but um, I had to go ahead and I had to write down the specs. Uh, normally I got like, you know, memory like an ox or back like an ox. I don't know, can't remember. Anyway, wrote this stuff down. So this first one, this is a 32 inch curved LED. So this one is 180 watts. This is a, a Yita motor and it's a 32 inch curved. Okay. Um, I picked this one up on Amazon. I want to say it's right around $50 and um, this one did come with a wiring harness. Okay. So a uh, pretty good deal if you're looking for something that's a little, you know, lower wattage, 180 watts, um, maybe uh, driving fog lights. Um, something like that. So here's this one. This one's a uh, 30 inch. This or a 29 inch actually, um, even though it's 30 inches. But it, this one is a 390 watt, 35,000 lumens. I don't know how accurate the lumens are, but this one's a DWVO. Um, this one is curved uh, as well. And so I'm looking at the curve to maybe match my front bumper because I'm going to show you in a bit where I'm going to mount this thing. So um, again, a little bit narrower width because I'm trying to figure out which one's going to uh, fit on my tow, ho tow hooks or in between my tow hooks. And then this was another one that I got too. This is a uh, 32 inch straight. This is also DWVO 390 watt, but I believe this one is 48,000 lumens. And again, all the same price. This one came with the harness. That last one, however, did not. So that's another $20 or so that you're going to be spending on a harness that is hooked up with like a relay and things. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna mount this on the front of my truck and you can see what I'm looking at. And I'm actually gonna show you two different ways to be mounting these because I know there's different options out there and uh, you guys might wanna mount these in a, in a different way than usual. So let's check this out. I'm actually gonna be mounting both of these off of the tow hooks. Just one's gonna have brackets on the tow hooks and the other one's just gonna be mounted to the tow hooks themselves. So my tow hooks are exactly 31 inches apart. I need them to be 31 and 11 sixteenths. Now it's time for some math. So 11 sixteenths divided by two, because I need half on each side, right? So I'm just gonna round that up to go up to 12 sixteenths. That goes into, divide that by two, that's three eighths, right? And then since I went up at 1 16th to get there, I also need to divide that by two. And so I subtract 1 32nd from three eighths. Cool, I'm sticking with that. That's what I'm gonna go with. If you have a better way of doing that math, put it in the comments, all right? That's just the way my brain works. So anyway, <laughs> three eighths minus one thirty second on the tape measure is what I'm gonna take these down to. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull these off. I'm gonna start grinding. So way to go, Fiat Chrysler, 18 millimeter, American truck, come on. So these bolts go through with a nut in the back. So if you don't have one of these impact guns, maybe call a friend, give them a beer, let them give you a hand. Be careful you don't drop one of those and hit you in the tooth. That's what happens. So here I am trying out my new table mat, right? So here's one eight, two eights, three eights. Let's go ahead and just give her a little mark. All right, so I got these marked up. Now I'm gonna go take a couple more measurements. So I took a measurement on my truck and I would like to be three inches out, which would be right about here. Um, but since this is curved in here, I won't be able to get the head of a bolt uh, tightened down. I won't be able to get a wrench or a socket or anything on it. So instead what I'm gonna do is I'm looking at this next flat spot right here, which is actually two and a half inches. So I'm gonna go look right now and I'm gonna see what two and a half inches uh, puts us at on my truck. 
two and a half puts us right there. I think we can make that work. All right, so I took one more measurement. I don't actually have to cut this whole thing off here. I can come out an inch and an eighth and still clear the back of that LED um, light bar. An inch and an eighth. All right, this is just a center hole punch, just to make sure I don't wobble too much. And then the bolt that I'm trying to get through there, is actually this guy, what is that? I think that's a quarter inch. So I believe that's a quarter inch. So I'm actually gonna hit this with one of my narrow, or my skinny uh, step down bits. All right, so there, that's where I want to get through with my step down. Seems I've overestimated the thickness for the step down bit. Woo! That's why I don't like using these. Just slam through, then you got a broken bit. All right, see how we are? Perfect. Sticks out far enough to grab that light bar. So let's go ahead now. We'll do the other one. All right, so here we are. Look at that. Things of beauty. All right, so mount them. once you get everything all cleaned up, I went ahead and hit these edges so they're not sharp. All right, I'm just gonna hit it with a little bit of Rust-Oleum, some uh, you know paint to stop the rust from coming in right here. So just make sure your notches are both facing towards the inside and these are actually interchangeable so it doesn't matter uh, once your paint's dry let's go ahead and let's put these on and again this is one of those things where if you don't have one of these call a buddy up get him a beer because you need an extra set of hands all right let's see how we did so this is that 32 inch curved bar again it's got the same mounting uh, dimensions as the straight one All right, so All right, and due to the power of editing, I got that the first time. Now, if you want to save yourself a big headache, that Allen wrench they gave you, go and cut about an inch or so off. All right now, when you get it in there, I can actually push it back. All right, now, so this is how you install either the full size curve, and you can see it fits just a little bit recessed. It's actually really nice. Okay, now I can, I'm gonna tighten this up whenever I get it, when it gets dark and I can go point it, but um, if it, f for whatever reason, right, maybe my cuts were a little off or, you know, something like that. If, if that was the case, I could, you know, just shim it up with a few more uh, washers and then that would tighten it down uh, nicely. So now what I'm gonna do, because it is the same installation for the straight bar, what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to show you how to modify those brackets to use one of those smaller bars um, because that one actually is supposed to be brighter. So if it is brighter, that's the one that I'm going to put on. So let's go ahead and I'll show you how to do that. All right, now for this smaller one, I'm actually left with about, whoops, about an inch or so on each side. So I'm going to take the L brackets that they gave us and just using some additional uh, quarter inch bolts. If I had a flat washer, I'd throw a flat washer on this side, but I don't. But you can see I've already got one up in here. All right, so I'm just gonna use a split washer, a lock washer. Throw that in right there, All right? Take this here, throw that in like that. Another split washer. And then a nut. And I'm gonna run that down in there tight. I'm gonna take my marks. I'll show you how I do that. So I'm gonna take my marks. Okay, 
Now that I've got these in place, I can put my marks on them. So I'm about one inch. So when I put this in the middle and I take my measurements, I've got about an inch on each side. So all that I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna come in here one inch. I'm gonna mark that. All right, so I have my marks right there. Now the choice is yours, okay? You can either bend these out this way if you want this to stick out right about there, which I think that's that's probably what I'm gonna do because I want mine to stick out just a little bit. Or you can bend them in and you would mount inside there, okay? Now you need to understand that once you do this, I'm pretty sure you can't take it back to Amazon. And there we are, all set up, good to go. just realizing that little bag of goodies they gave us extra hardware so you don't even have to get your own hardware if you wanted to mount these brackets this way all right I am using the shorter ones now because going through thinner metal I think it'll be a little more sturdy Still got some movement here if I wanted to adjust it. But man, you look good. So now that that one's in and we're mounted solid, I think it's time to talk about wiring. So you may notice that I left the wiring on the driver's side, and that is because my battery, my switch, everything is all going to go on the driver's side. So that makes it easier to feed the wire. I won't have any excess. And you can see, and just stick it right back up in here, make my connections. So let's talk about how we're gonna do this. I think I'm racing the weather. It's not looking too nice out here. Anyway, here's what we have with our wiring harness. This is your typical harness. This is what you're gonna find when you look for them on Amazon. This is what you're gonna get in the kit. Um, both lights that I got that came with the harness came with the same exact harness. So it's just an 87 pin relay. All right, just a little four pin relay is all that it is. Okay, and it's simple. What I like about running relays is I don't need to run heavy gauge wire all the way up to my switch. And then with that, I don't even have to, you know, get a big powerful switch. You can see the one that comes with this little tiny wire because the way the relay works is all that you are doing is activating the relay and the relay is carrying the larger wire. So you can see here. This is nice. It comes pre-fused, pre-wired. Um, I'm just gonna mount this right onto my battery posts. Uh, I gotta buckle this up somewhere on the uh, underneath the hood, and then I just gotta run my wire up to where I can access this inside the cab, and then this end here, I'm just gonna wire into my lights. All right. So you can see what we're dealing with here. So here's my hot side. Just look for the uh, the plus. Um, there's supposed to be a red cap, which I will be replacing because that needs to be there. So the nice thing is, is I have a stud here that I can just put this onto here. And then I also have a stud on my ground side that I can do there as well. So let's get a wrench. Let's take these off. Let's get these mounted. Let's figure out how we're going to do this first. All right. So I'm going to feed my wires right down through here. And I'm gonna try to stick behind like body brackets and all that other stuff, but you wanna feed your wires before you put power to it. All right, so where I'm gonna mount this relay is this little bolt right here. It looks a lot bigger than it is. 
I am going to have to drill out the relay uh, mounting hole just a little bit, but that should be all right. Okay, so 10 seconds with a step bit. Back in business. So run your wiring. I'm going to run run behind this hood strap. All right, now we're mounted solid there. So you can see now I have plenty of room here to run these here and there. But before we do that, we're going to run our electrical under the inside of the cab. All right, so to get this wiring through the firewall, I'm actually going to drill a hole right through here and put a little weather grommet in there run the wire through it and be nice and clean. So all that piece is, is this is an automatic. So this is where the master cylinder would have been for the clutch. So that the factory puts a clutch block off plate there, um, but I can drill through that and uh, run my wiring through it. Worst case scenario, I mess it up, right? I just buy a new block off plate. All right, that right there, that's where we're gonna come through. I just went ahead and cut the end off of the plug in. See the battery, you gotta drill a ginormous hole. So it's a little cold out here. It's a little trick. Soften up that grommet to get it through the hole. Alright, so I'm just wiring or running this wire up out of the way because I'm going to come back behind this panel. So this is the panel I'm talking about right here. This just pops off. Alright, so you just want to make sure that you're running it as clean as possible up and out of the way. So for me, this is going to be temporary. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to shorten this down exactly to where I want it. Right, so make sure I get it where I want it there. Okay. I'm gonna strip this outer covering. Right, and now I'm just matching colors. So I've got my red, got my yellow, got my black. Little tiny wires. All right, I'm gonna start with the black. I always start with the black. Okay. Then I'm going to do the same thing on here. I'm going to cut this down right here. Because eventually what I'm going to do is I'm wiring in a multi-bank switch. Um, I'll be doing another video on that one. So you might want to, at this point right now, you might want to hit that subscribe, right? And ding that little bell so that you're ready whenever it comes on. All right. But here we are. So again, just stripping this black. I'm going to twist these two ends together. And I'm just using these crimping caps. Like I said, this is temporary. It's not even gonna last, uh, you know, a few days. Once I get that crimped down in there like that, right, then I'll move on. And again, I'm gonna do my hot wire last. So my hot wire coming in, what is that, the, the line? The line coming in, right, is gonna be my, um, my red wire. That's coming from the battery, okay? Um, my load going out is going to be this yellow. Sometimes the load is blue. I've seen them blue. Um, that does change. But, and these little caps, I, I love these caps. They're so convenient, so easy. They're clean, they're better than the twist caps. All right, and there we go. We are done on that. So now I can get that kind of up out of the way over here. And I'm actually just going to do this like that right there. Peel this. Look at that. It's beautiful. All right, now that I went through the firewall with my wiring, I can go ahead and I'm gonna hook these up here. I'm gonna hook the ground up first. 
These are both metric. 13 and 10. All right, so you can see where I ran this. I just ran this out and then down through there. And then I actually ran it between my frame rails right through here to where I can just come up. I'm gonna make my connection and I'll just button this up, zip tie it up out of the way because here's where I come through right with my light. So here it is, you see, it's nice, fits the contours of uh, my pumper nicely. So all that I did underneath when I wired it up was just the red and the black. I just connected them much like I did that switch. So I didn't feel the need to uh, show you what was going on there. But um, I do recommend, uh, you know, soldering that heat shrink and all that other stuff. Um, I will be going back up in there and fighting a little bit of weather here. So uh, <laughs> I'm trying to get out before it gets bad. This is the one that I chose. If I wanted to go with one of the other full size uh, 32 inches, um, I could have gone with either the straight bar or the curved bar. This is the one that fit the profile the best for me. And um, I also like it how it kind of matches the look and style and things of my truck. All three great light bars. Um, simple to hook up the wiring, the harness, and all that other stuff. The only one. Uh, the one didn't come with a wiring harness so that's kind of a hit there because instead of paying for uh, you know $50 and keeping everything uh, comparable instead now it's $50 plus an extra $20 for a harness so for that reason I do recommend the other two uh, just simply because they're more uh, cost efficient but um, if you had an old harness line around or you know just 87 pin relay you could easily hook that up and not have to get a wiring harness but anyway there you have it. Um, I really hope you liked it. If you did, make sure you hit that like button. And if you're new to the channel and you haven't done so yet, make sure you subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification because I will be doing another video wiring in um, uh, a switch bank for my truck in here. And then I'm also going to be adding some, uh, some rock lights or some exterior lights on the sides underneath. And then also some reverse lights in the back. So, uh, I, again, hope you guys enjoyed it. And... Uh, Stay tuned and I will catch you guys on the next video. Thanks for watching.